Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. I don't have all of the projects that I've made in the past because most of the time I give them away. But since moving into this house, I've started to keep more and more and just kind of add furniture pieces here and there as we go. So today we're going to walk through everything that I have in my house and see how it's holding up. All right, so Jeremy's recording this in my office. So looking into my kitchen, I've got this little bar stool area and I made these bar stools. Um, and as you can tell, <laughs> I never flattened the, or leveled the feet of one of them. Uh, but these are just two by fours and with a, I think it is Carrington stain by uh, Rust-Oleum, I think. Anyway, I love this color, but this is just regular two by fours and I took my time to cut out all of the knots and it's nice straight grain and it's an entire half lap construction. So all of these are half lap together. And if you look closely, the front rails are backwards because I put one leg assembly on backwards on one table and it, yeah, so these are wrong. That being said, these have held up just fine. There's no problems with them. And because they are two by four construction, I have no problems beating these up. These are utilitarian. They get the job done. And if you, if you get away from say two or three feet, they look really good. This is my trash can. I use it every day. It's probably the most used item that I've ever made. I made this before YouTube, so it was 2011-ish. I don't, I don't even know if I still have the SketchUp file for this thing. But there's a couple interesting things that I wanted to incorporate in the design. Number one, uh, these handles are horseshoes. There's a Western style theme going throughout all our house. So horseshoe handles. And there's a drawer down at the bottom for extra bags. So typically, I would take the trash out at night and spray the whole thing with Lysol, let it sit out and open airing out, and then put a new bag in the morning. Uh, but this handle up here allows for, like, like if you crack an egg and you have egg yolk on your hands and you need to throw the, the shell away, you can still use your arm to lift it up and not have to touch anything with your hands, which is handy. And also this particular design, this lid comes off completely and the bag just wraps around the top of the can and on top of this lip, which is where the top sits on top of. Now, I, I made this before I really understood wood movement and the do's and don'ts. So this, this rail that goes all the way across that the lid sits on top of, it is just glued right in place, but it's a perpendicular strip to the panels. So this side panel is one solid piece of wood. This front panel is several glued up and that it's not even allowing for a wood movement. That being said, I haven't had any problems and this thing is uh, seven years old, something like that. <clears throat> so uh, there's that. The top is put together with pocket holes, uh, just some cheap little hinges up here. The inside is finished with several coats of amber shellac. The outside is amber shellac and then a water-based polyurethane. And oh, also this, this solid wood panel in the front was the very first panel I flattened with a hand plane. Uh, basically just cleaned it up with a hand plane. But yeah, one of the most used items and uh, it's holding up just fine. Oh, also a critical design element for this was that I had to design something that was large enough to fit three Little Caesars pizza boxes on the inside. Let's go have some pizza! So there's stuff in there. But there's a lot of storage to where you can put bigger items in there and keep the lid down. So, my trash can. This is the plywood bookcase that I made a um, couple of years back. It's the most recent bookcase that I've made. I've made several of them. And as you can tell, I already need to make more. My wife is a big reader. And I know someone out there will probably say the same thing that I say. Just get a Kindle or a tablet or something to read your books on so we don't have a million books. But... My wife doesn't because she likes to physically flip pages and that's okay, whatever. I, I don't complain about books because she doesn't complain about my shop. It's a win-win situation. Uh, the, the bookcase itself is holding up just fine. There's no problems with it other than the finish. I used just regular latex paint. I knew I should have top coated it with something else like a water-based polyurethane or water-based lacquer. Something to protect the latex paint a little bit more and I, and I didn't. So the top surface here, it's kind of... If you let something sit for a little while, it sticks. Like this is probably stuck. Yeah, it was stuck. So I, the plan that I have upcoming is to uh, empty this out, take the top off, spray everything with a nicer 
quality white, something like a white polyurethane or a white pigmented lacquer, something that's going to hold up a little bit better because uh, there are some, a lot of scuff marks on it already. Uh, and then change out the top for a piece of naturally colored wood, something dark like a real wide piece of heart hickory or sapili or mahogany, something I'm not quite sure, but I want the top to be a darker color. And I'll, it, just so that it matches another project that I'm going to show you in just a minute. So the bookcase, it's holding up just fine. It's just completely full. On top of the bookcase, I've got a couple of my favorite projects. This is a little two drawer dovetail box that I made that uh, is, I guess, relatively recent within the past year or so. And there's two drawers and the drawers still kind of have that piston fit where they knock the next one out, which is nice. I have had to trim the drawers down just a little bit on their height because of humidity, this thing expanding. And that's just because it's insanely humid in Mississippi. Uh, but it's holding up just fine. I've got a little wooden puzzle made by Timothy Hall. And um, yeah, this is the puzzle itself. It's one of those geometric puzzles that has pieces inside here that you have to stack in a certain way. It only goes together one way. But this is one of those things that are incredibly aggravating. And when you have like in-laws or family members in town, you give them that so that occupies them for just a little bit. On this side is um, one of my favorite pieces. It's a, it's a clock that I made while in Wisconsin with Nick Ferry and April Wilkerson. We had a, a plan to all three of us make a single clock, an individual clock in the same shop in the same day with all the same tools. And that's what I came up with. It's, it's basically like a little dish uh, for the clock itself, a little concave surface in here. And on the bottom side, just a simple clock mechanism. And the main splines of 3, 6, 9, and 12 are just pieces of walnut that I cut on the table saw. And this is just a, a piece of soft maple that is spalted that looks gorgeous. I put a brass dowel in it. And this just hangs from the front. So it's holding up just fine. However, due to the get it done kind of timeline that we had or the challenge that we set it's not the greatest as far as the the finish i can still see uh, planar marks on this piece um, but i'm not going to go and refinish it and change it because this has a little bit of a story to it so it is what it is that's that's one of my favorite pieces this is my dining table it is another one of those projects that it gets heavily used and we designed it my wife and i wanted something that didn't have chairs, something kind of farmhouse shape, uh, rectangular in shape with benches and not chairs. And a lot of people have asked me, how do I like the benches? Uh, because, you know, do I ever regret not making chairs, I guess? And no, we like the benches that you don't have to slide anything in or out. They're positioned in such a way that everybody can get down and or get in and sit down just fine without moving anything. And then it's easy to vacuum the rug or whatever, because both benches just flip upside down and sit on the table very conveniently. Um, a couple things I want to point out on this project. This was made with kiln dried hickory and it made me realize that using kiln dried lumber in Mississippi is not really a good idea because it is again so humid in Mississippi so whatever you have out of the kiln it's going to expand quite a bit before it kind of you know reaches equilibrium. So I got the entire table done. These are breadboard ends and then the center field, the whole point of a breadboard end is to allow the center to expand and contract and maintain flatness. Uh, but the breadboard ends, what ended up happening is the center field expend, expanded a good quarter of an inch past the breadboard ends uh, the first three or four months that I had it in the house. And then I lay it on its side and used a hand plane to plane the sides flush again with the breadboard ends, refinish the sides and made sure everything was nice and neat. And right now I can still feel that once again, the center field has expanded a little bit more and it's just a little bit proud of the breadboard ends, which is fine because when you do a breadboard end like this, it's, it's never going to be perfectly flush with the sides more often than, more often than not due to expansion and contraction of the center field. So uh, a couple interesting things about this one, the joinery on the ends, the breadboard ends, it's actually a, it's kind of a mouthful to say, it's a wedged through mortise and tenon sprung breadboard end. It, it makes total sense 
when you break it down. But uh, yeah, and that was one of my, I think, more interesting videos because at that time I haven't done any, I haven't done anything like that. So it turned out really good. The, the breadboard ends are holding up just fine. The only change that I would make on this is uh, not use water-based polyurethane because here recently, which is something that I was told might happen, I've noticed if you leave something wet on here for a little while, like a cup or something, um, it does start to you know, affect the finish a little bit, kind of gives it that alligator skin feel uh, to the finish. That being said, it's not at a point to where I should have to refinish it at any time soon, so, so there's that. Um, and also, I'll overlay something else on the screen to show you a better view of this top. I want, the, I want to show you what I did with this top. I think it turned out really good in that I positioned the sapwood, so there's like two veins of sapwood running down the top, and that just kind of makes the entire top kind of flow better. So instead of having uh, the, the cut, the circular saw or table saw rip cut, cutting off the piece of white and it just just ending abruptly into a piece of heartwood on the next board. I rotated the pieces so that the sapwood touches sapwood and then all the cuts in between uh, are, are matching. So it just kind of gives this nice feel. Also one thing to note with the color is that this water-based finish makes everything kind of have a, a, a white or a creamy hue to it. Whereas in like an oil-based finish, makes everything a little bit more yellowish, which is something that, of course, you know, a lot of people know about. Uh, but I want to show you that these two projects, in particular, this box is an oil-based, uh, actually it's, it's, a, it's a shellac, I'm sorry, it's a shellac-based finish, which is uh, kind of acts the same way as an oil-based finish in which it adds a little bit of yellow tone to it. And then the water-based finish is, it isn't anywhere near as yellow. So uh, there's that little bit of information. One other thing that I wanted to point out with this table is I found this really awesome piece of hickory that had a, a distinct line between the sapwood and heartwood. There's this very harsh natural flow of this dark figure. And this is the front rail. Uh, I selected that piece as the front rail. And the opposite piece on this board is actually the other side rail. It's just not as defined as this. And as you come through my, the front door of my house, you can clearly see this rail. So a little bit of project positioning and figuring out uh, the better appearance side of things. I wanted this to showcase. And then also right below this front rail, or all the rails, I should say, I put a piece of walnut to trim it around. Uh, I really like this look. I continued it with these um, benches. Uh, just scaled the size down just a little bit. One thing I did not do on the benches that I did do on the table is this little piece of trim down here on the table. I put a walnut ring all the way around here that's that's uh, inlaid but also proud of the surface. I did not do that on these benches just to kind of make uh, just to kind of make the feel of the table is more superior than the benches if that makes sense. This is the coffee table that I recently completed so it's not really like a major past project. It's not that old, uh, but I absolutely love it. It's my favorite project that I've ever made by far. It's got a mahogany top and a lot of detail going on with the joinery and an ambrosia maple base and with again a lot of detail going on with the joinery. I will be making drawers for this. I just haven't gotten around to doing so uh, because I was undecided on a couple things. So, so that there will be drawers in here and the drawer fronts will match the ambrosia maple base. And I don't baby this thing. My wife thought that this was going to be something that, like, you know, you can't you just look at, you know, you don't use. But no, I'll still sit on the couch and kick my feet up on it. It's a table. I made it to be used as a table, and I'm going to use it as a table. So, yeah. Um, but also, just because I don't really have a place for it, and I want to really showcase the top of this table, this hickory panel, I'm sorry, mahogany panel, looks beautiful, and I want to showcase it. I don't really have a place for this this chest box anymore because this used to sit on the top of our coffee table previously. But this is a little chest box I made out of hickory and walnut and it was kind of an experimentation with how long a mineral oil finish would hold up. Now mineral oil doesn't doesn't offer hardly any protection at all. It's not a film finish, it's an oil and it's really not even a great finish to be used for hardly anything other than like cutting boards. Um, 
but I wanted to use it on this and there's cat hair everywhere by the way and yeah it's not holding up that great so I'm gonna have to do something with this as far as the finish goes here soon it's kind of expected but I still wanted to experiment with it as far as the functionality of this everything's working out just fine everything all the seams still fit just fine uh, pretty pleased with this one unfortunately I'm the only one in the house who actually plays chess frequently so uh, there's not much on board chess going on so this kind of just lives as a decoration item this is a pocket hole blanket chest I made this out of pine uh, I think this was again yeah this was this was before YouTube is actually uh, this was the first gift that I gave my wife, this big monster blanket chest. And it was in 2000 and, I want to say 2010-ish. Um, wife, Me and my wife were still dating at the time. And yeah, this looks like a, uh, you know, a, a, panel, a floating panel blanket chest. But it's basically a, a pocket hole skeleton all the way around. The pocket holes are on the inside. And then you cover the pocket holes with plywood from the inside. So if you open this up and look down in, it's just a painted white interior uh, to make it kind of look on the inside uh, of plywood. And the outside, you just dress it up to make it look like a real fancy blanket chest. It's sitting on a base uh, that has an arched front rail. This is inexpensive pine. Uh, this is all southern yellow pine one by material that I ripped down to remove the corners. And this is just quarter inch pine panels. It's finished with amber shellac and I think it was an oil based polyurethane, which they say on the side of, uh, you know, polyurethane, don't put polyurethane on top of uh, waxed shellac. So basically, most of the shellacs you get in a can have wax in them. Uh, don't put polyurethane on top of it. I did, and I've had zero problems with this particular finish. So I don't want to recommend everyone do that, but there's a little bit of feedback on that. So this is a blanket chest, which means there's storage inside it. My wife actually stores seasonal items in here. So um, some fall decorations for fall time, of course, some Christmas decorations and um, spring decorations. She likes to decorate the house and get kind of have that seasonal feel for it. So that means everything on top has to come off when we go inside it which is, again, only three or four times of the year. It's not that big of a deal, but it is kind of a pain in the butt to remove everything. So one of the things that's on the to-do list and has been since basically we got married <laughs> is to make an entertainment center uh, or some type of media console. What, I'm, what I have in my mind is to make a wide, larger media console that goes in between these two windows on my wall that can be a standalone project because my hope is that I'll get that done. And my wife says, yeah, that looks good. Let's just leave it as the, at that. But what she wants is to build upon the media console to build up and around. And yeah, so hopefully I'll win that. I doubt it, but that's an upcoming project. The blanket chest, it's holding up just fine. It has moved from, let's see, it has moved probably six or seven different times through different apartments and from my place to the apartments and then from the apartments to when we finally got this house so it has moved quite a bit it is a little bit beat up around the edges but it's holding up just fine no signs of wear or tear and uh yeah just uh inexpensive way to get something that looks pretty darn pretty darn good this would look good also with a a painted finish um, so you don't see the wood grain. I would not stain one of these dark though just because it's pine and it's inexpensive stuff. This is an ambrosia maple table base with mahogany top. I made it last week and it's holding up just fine. This is a mission style coat rack that I made a few years back. Um, not much to it and there's not really much you know structural demands on it. It's just solid and you screw it to the wall. It is it gets used all the time and what do you know more books on the top. This is my three tier half lap shelf and it is got nothing but half lap joints for the main construction. Uh, all of the half lap joints are proud and chamfered. I'll slide this around so you can see the front a little bit better. And the front of these shelves is sloped a little bit at the same angle of the legs. The wood for this is hickory, primarily the heartwood of hickory. I think it's actually all heartwood hickory. And it is stained with a Minwax Early American stain. I think that's right. Don't quote me on that. But it's a darker stain. And 
I had, up to this point, I had never stained hickory before and realized that hickory is one of those woods that stains beautifully. I just sanded this um, like I normally do with any other project, no pre-stained conditioner. Uh, just put the stain on there and it's nice and even and it, it's one of the nicer woods to stain actually. So that being said, I don't like to stain. I like to keep the wood natural looking when, when possible. Um, yeah, my wife ends up ends up like ended up liking this a lot better than what we both had initially thought. So it gets put to use. This is actually my wife's reading chair, and this is her table beside the reading chair. Now it was originally made for plants. She doesn't necessarily use it for plants. She just keeps her her book up here, and yeah, it's a nice little decoration piece, I think. So this is my my guest room of the house, and I think it's pretty cool because every bit of this is pine furniture. So when I first moved into the house we wanted a place for friends and family to stay and the easiest way to get multiple um, sleeping arrangements is to make a bunk bed that was the main reason i designed this this bunk bed and it is it's it's just a very very basic design nothing but 90 degree cuts butt joints glue and screws and it is extremely solid so this is the 2x4 and 2x6 bunk bed that uh, seems to be popular on my main channel which is cool and everything in this room pretty much um, was designed as a set. So the goal with this was to make the most, uh, the, the easiest bunk bed solution that I could come up with. Somebody who doesn't hardly have any tools could pick up, uh, you know, a miter saw or a circular saw and a drill basically is all you need to put something like this together. So very basic with this. And then the next thing I designed in this bedroom set was these uh, two by ten bookcases. There's one on either side of the bed and these have a stopped dado connection in here Again, two by tens very basic materials nothing fancy as far as surface prep or anything um, And just cutting a dado with a router now the finish on everything in this room is a What is it called rustic pine? Brie wax or bry wax. I don't I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's a it's a tinted wax and that's literally all I used I barely sanded any of this you can still kind of see that it's that it's uh, construction grade lumber I don't care. It was more of a Utilitarian and skill building kind of a project for somebody else who's interested in this whole bedroom set so and you can really tell on the bunk bed how much how how little surface prep I did I actually just ran these through the planer if I'm not mistaken just to remove the uh, stamp um the industry stamps on them whatever those are called and up from those two projects is i forget which one i did first but this is a chest of drawers made out of nothing but again two by tens from uh, my local lows and i i cut out all of the knots and tried to use as much of the straight grain as possible so yeah just very clear inexpensive pine again stained with that or colored finished whatever you want to call it with that uh, rustic pine wax and how's the rustic how's the wax holding up well it's it's wax it holds up uh, not that great so I would knew that going into it these haven't had much abuse to them because this is the guest room and they don't get much use at all uh, but the solution is to just re-wax them it's kind of like um, old antique pine furniture it has that feel of just a lot of use and um, yeah that's what I was going for with these uh, after that, or before one or the other, I get these two mixed up, is this um, little blanket chest that I made. And again, this is 2x10s from Lowe's, very inexpensive to build. And I was just trying a couple of things out with the design. Uh, again, the same finish. And my wife uses this for uh, her military gear. So I don't ever go inside there. And then on this wall was the sofa table that was in our living room and just replaced. This has seen a tremendous amount of abuse because it was the table in our hallway right when you walk through my door. So I walk through the door and throw my keys on it, throw my hat on it, sometimes my phone. Wife does the same thing. This thing was abused. My wife actually melted a candle over here. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is probably going to be... I'm, I'm thinking about stripping this, the wax off of it, and then painting it at some point, just, just to cover up everything. Um, but yeah, an ugly kind of table. But this one was made for kind of showing mortise and tenon joinery from a rail to a leg connection. And yeah, as far as stability, this is perfectly fine. This is a project that... <laughs> 
I made a long time ago. Have you ever seen those pictures that you can get that have like the pictures and, and three different canvases and you can put them up on the wall with space in between? Well, this was a gift I got was these pictures and I thought, you know what? It'd be cool if I lived at some, I lived someplace that I could see that out the window. And I'm like, oh, out the window. Why not just make a fake window to put around the pictures? So I did that. It matched the decor in our last apartment, but not so much in this house. So literally for the past four years, this has been sitting here waiting for me to do something with it. And I have no clue what I'm going to do with it. I'm think I think I'm just going to take the pictures out, hang them somewhere, and get rid of the frame. Just because it doesn't match anything. So this is a, a window valance or window box or, or corn, a cornice. I think that's what it's called, cornice. I could be completely wrong. But it goes over the top of the window to cover like the... Uh, you know, curtain rod or the top of the blinds or something like that. And we made one out of, of scrap wood to experiment to see if my wife liked it. And I thought, ah, that's pretty cool looking. My wife liked it and said, let's make them for every window in the house. And then I went through my house and figured out how many windows I had. And that's the only one I ever made because I have way too many windows. And I don't know if I'm ever going to do anything with this one. But it's, it's holding up just fine. It's painted white. It's been taken down, put back up, taken down, put back up. Touched with dirty hands, so it needs to be repainted, but just a very basic window cornice, I think, and it's holding up just fine. This is the first bookcase I made for my wife, and it was made in the apartment shop, for those of you who have been following for that long. It is holding up just fine, however, there is a big crack on this side. It is 1x12 shelving material, and I got it at a discount. It was um, inexpensive stuff, you know, like $1 per linear foot for 1x12 material. Um, it wasn't dry when I bought it. So the thing is, I, I think this crack is due to this piece being too wet when I built it and it just shrank and cracked a little bit. Uh, no, nothing else is wrong with the project and nothing was joined in such a way where the wood expansion and contraction conflicts. So my guess is that was due to it just being too wet when I'm, when I use the material. It's a early American Minwax stain with a I think this is a just a straight up lacquer finish both the the, the finish and uh, yeah, I'm not having any problems with the finish this is one of those projects that made me realize that you should use pre-stained conditioner on pine when staining it dark again one of the reasons why I don't like using stain at all if you want something dark then the best thing is to just get dark wood if possible this project is a project that I made kind of starting out I, I wanted to make a fancy picture frame so I, I used a couple router bits to make this profile and then glued in some uh, dental molding that I purchased at Lowe's I think the dental molding was poplar and then the rest of this is pine maybe it's poplar I don't know but it doesn't match regardless and I did not do a good job getting the dental molding to match on the miters uh, and also I made a a splined miter so running through or a keyed miter I think running through the direction of the miter is a spline that I cut on the uh, router table with the router and I had so many people say that that was pointless and that's that's going to make this project fall apart because of the the grain direction and expansion and contraction and blah 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 and that was the first time I made like a you know a, a actual an actual interesting joint other than like a butt joint with glue and brad nails or something so that was pretty interesting to me the project is holding up just fine it is ugly but it's holding up just fine this is my wife's one and only project and she made this well i say she did she did 90 percent of the work but she did it all under my instruction i was guiding her through everything and because of which it was just mainly her on the camera she received a lot of flack saying like yeah right that's not your very first project uh but actually it is it's her ver her first and only project she does not care one bit about woodworking which is fine um but this is a very inexpensive pine cabinet it's a jewelry cabinet the design is a shanty to chic design it is pine with i think again early american minwax stain no pre-stain conditioner just get it done and then um, I think we use the water-based poly on top, I think. This lives in our bathroom, high humidity environment, so the door has bowed just slightly. The top and bottom are pushed in by like a quarter of an inch compared to where the handle is. Not that big of a deal because it still works. The inside is a bunch of jewelry storage. My wife loves it. 
she doesn't know what this door bowing means or anything, but uh, she absolutely loves it. This is um, this is interesting. I think the most interesting part. Instead of thinking about some type of complex solution for a bunch of um, earring storage, we, we picked up these craft sheets. I forget what they're called, but you can put thread through them to make different designs. I, I'm not a crafty person, but anyway, this hanging off of two cup hooks creates a lot of earring storage. But I thought I thought that was pretty interesting. So. There's those and some bunch of cup hooks down here for random things over here for dangly things and then bracelets and such. But my wife uses this every day and she's proud she made it and that's really all that matters. All right, that's it for this video. If you guys have any other questions on anything that I've shown, just leave it in the description below or send me an email. And if you guys have any horror stories of anything that you've made and had unexpected results down the road, leave us a little story in the comments. You guys take care, have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video.